What's going on, guys? Welcome to Bat Thought Studios. Today, we're going to be talking a lot of Game of Thrones. So it's going to be Game of Thrones and House of Dragon episode. Um, I got my panel here, Micah and OG. Um, Micah, I'll start with you. How you doing, man? What's up? Hey, I feel like a regular, man. I know, dude. Um, he's been on our uh, uh, podcast uh, um, channel. If you guys haven't checked that out, it's Bat Thoughts Podcast. I'll leave that in the link uh, in the description below. But yeah, Micah, how you doing, bro? Uh, if you could tell everyone... Good uh where they can find you on social media good i'm michael wailana right there at the bottom and on instagram correct yes cool cool and og how you doing og i am doing fantastic thank you so much tones for having me on talk a little game of thrones a little hot d house of dragon <laughs> it's gonna be a fun time uh yeah you can find me on uh, youtube orange grove 55 where we talk a lot about theme parks uh, a lot of fun stuff there with like a lot of, you know, Disney park stuff. We dip into some Universal too every now and then. Uh, we also get into some nerd stuff like uh, the the MCU and Star Wars and all that good stuff. So uh, check us out YouTube and you can find us also on Twitter at Orange Grove 55 and Instagram Orange Grove 55. Perfect. And yeah, we're going to be talking a lot uh, uh a lot of movies on this channel so a lot of TV shows so you'll see, you'll see these guys again. Um but yeah, so Today is going to be uh, House of the Dragons and Game of Thrones. Now, I want to start off with this. The first seven seasons. We're going to leave the eighth season, the very last seasons of Game of Thrones. We're going to leave that out for now. But, why? I mean, no, why why I mean, would we we'll, do we'll, such a thing? We'll, we'll get into that. We'll definitely get into that. But I'll start with you, Micah. The first seven seasons, to me, was amazing TV. But what is your what was your opinion and thoughts on the first seven seasons? The first seven seasons were as much a part of me as my hand. Like, <laughs> exactly. they were, they were, oh my goodness. I thought nothing would ever top Lord of the Rings until I saw the first se seven seasons of Game of Thrones. And yeah, it was, I had through parties, every single season premiere, merch. I went to concerts with live music. It was IMAX oh, episodes. Wow. It was everything. So, yeah. Now, okay. now, when with the the eighth season before it came out, were you skeptic of that seventh season because it wasn't officially "quote unquote" written? How was your feeling? No, when that the, season came the out? first the first three episodes of season eight, I enjoy. Mm -hmm. The last three, whoa. We'll talk about it, but the, <laughs> I there I, there's a specific moment where I knew, oh god, it, this <laughs> oh god, it, it's done. We're done. Yeah. Like this is not going to end well. And dude, it's it, it's crazy how you have such a legendary like show and a high from watching it, and then at the end, it literally felt like a breakup. Like <laughs> exactly, it dude. it felt That's like amazing. some it felt like like a dog died in the family. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. I was just so I agree. yeah distraught. I agree. Now, OG, what, what's what's your take on the first seven seasons? Okay, so I actually I didn't watch them like in real time. I was a late bloomer when it came to Game of Thrones, and so I actually watched the show for the first time a couple of years ago during the pandy. You know, when everyone was stuck at home, why not yeah. pop on Game of Thrones? So I actually lo I loved the first seven seasons. I thought it was phenomenal television. It's one of those shows where it's like I can just sit there. And just watch episode after episode like on a sunday and you know eight hours will go by <laughs> don't even mm -hmm. realize it you know i thought it was fantastic man i absolutely fell in love with it and and my yeah. my opinions i think on and we'll get into it but my opinions on season eight might be a little different than than you fellas because because i didn't have that those the years of investment with the show um you know, I only spent maybe because I we binged quite a bit. It only took us like maybe like a month or something to get through it all, and um, yeah, so it, it was a little bit different. You know, I wasn't like a like a invested all these years into it, and then and had this big finale in the end, where a lot of fans like that did do that were very disappointed. But uh, I was I was a little bit more lenient on it on a season eight just because I think that I, I I had that binge. It was that binge effect, you know. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah, I'm interesting. I'm I'm very interested to hear your take because you. I mean, you say you talk about theme parks. The queue and the waiting for the ride, right, actually leads to the excitement overall. So right. when you wait a week before each episode and then a year and a half before each season, the wait does affect 
your the, outlook the before the before the opening credits start you're already yeah. like oh my god let's go but if you're binging it's like it's different so yeah oh yeah well it's like you know i'm a big star wars guy and it's like you know you had the sequel trilogy which came out so many years <clears throat> after the original trilogy and even it really came out a long time even after the prequels mm -hmm. so you had all these years of like pent up like curiosity like what happened to luke what happened to leia what happened all these years of that and then so the expectations were just through the roof you yeah. know and then and, and so, then you take a lightsaber and throw it over your shoulder <laughs> exactly <laughs> and you throw it over right and it's like so so someone going into star wars like let's say a newbie to the franchise who just binges like the whole saga i think their perception of the sequels would be different than that of a person who like grew up on star wars then you know as a teenager maybe watch the prequels and as an adult they watch the sequels it's a whole totally different perception so with this it's the same idea i think yeah yeah i i agree and I, i'm kind of in the same boat as you guys that the first seven seasons to me were i and in a way i was kind of like uog i didn't see the first four seasons when before they came out or as they came out i watched the the fifth season and on is when i watched it every week so the first uh four seasons i've been wa binge watched and then you know went on from there and i thought everything about it was amazing they you know they they put so much detail in the in the movie or in the show and if you go back and watch it, it, it it's even better because you realized how much detail because you know what's going to happen in the in the um you know in pre in the next episodes and stuff so and you kind of go back and be like oh there's you know there's a hint there there's a hint there and it was so detailed which is amazing to me like uh, that's what makes a good tv show yeah. now the first seven seasons were I kind of talked to Micah about this uh, before. The first seven seasons of Game of Thrones had the best character buildups of all time, and when it comes to TV shows, and I I don't even think it's close. The Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen, oh, yeah. Daenerys Targaryen, yeah, it, it it was so legendary and so poetic to have those two people eventually either get married or whatever whatever which way they wanted to go obviously we know the way it went but it was so fun to watch those character buildups and i thought one through seven it was just chef's kiss perfect and oh, yeah and this is where we're segue into season eight and <laughs> and i'll start with you og sure season eight was because you watched it from did you watch it from one to eight is that how you watched yeah it? i went all the way through yeah. <clears throat> now we'll get your perspective first since we you know we watched season yeah. eight when it came out uh what was your opinion on season eight and do you think it killed the uh your look on the show or do you think it made it better how, what do you think um, um it didn't kill it. my look on the show i didn't kill my 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 my, my appreciation of the show um I, but I did find it kind of weird. Like, I can never pronounce her name. Was it Denier? 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 Denier. Yeah. Yeah. I always have a hard time with these names. <laughs> I loved her character through the whole series. You know, I just felt it was a little strange. Like she becomes like a total psychopath in season eight. And I wasn't really feeling that direction for her character in my. And, and I just didn't like the way they went with that. But at the same time, I didn't like hate it to the point where it like ruined my perception of the whole show. I still really liked the show. Um, but I could see like fans that were invested in this thing for so long and then they get into season eight and it's like they take these weird creative choices, how that would be kind of like, oh my God, you know, what a letdown, you know? But yeah, I didn't really love that like turn. I didn't like that turn, but um, it is what it is, you know? I think she's an interesting character nonetheless, though. I, I really loved her character. It, it was great. Overall. It, her character was perfect and she, her as an actor played that just played Daenerys perfect in my opinion but what about perfect. you Mike how, how was your outlook on a uh, season eight and your opinions the the like I said the first three episodes were actually very good the long night was very good mm -hmm. but during watching it it was like oh my god this is amazing where it where I knew it was done was when the bolt hit her second dragon and just killed it like that yeah. that's that is when it broke broke all my immersion in the show broke all the world building because you're saying what makes that show important it's the script it's the world building and it's right. the immersion how yeah. immersed are you how how invested are you in these characters 
how good is the world building? Like, like you said, the details, like I know where this is and where that is. It's like, I know this map more than earth. Like (laughs) you, you, you get invested (laughs) in it. And then the dragon, once the dragon had the bolt and then it it just, man, it just steamrolled, tumbled down after that because you build up these creatures as like more than just creatures. And then all of a sudden, Oh, let's just, move one off the board to make the battle more fair. i guess quicker yeah fair yeah. or whatever you want to call it it was the first time where i saw the writers going okay we have a character we don't know what to do with it let's uh boom you're on gray joy and mm-hmm. it was just yeah it, like you you were saying that the all these characters like jamie lannister and john snow and all that stuff the reason why season eight sucked was because the character development arcs tanked because what's the point of showing jamie lannister in the hot tub with brianne mm-hmm. letting you guys know who how this person while a douchebag is actually still kind of a good guy yeah and then for and then for him to just go back to square one so many characters literally <laughs> just they so many characters just went back to square one and yeah. it's like why yeah, and that's interesting you mentioned about the dragon. So that, that's a good point. And it's like sometimes with, with a lot of like with storytelling, like when you have things that are too convenient, right? Like we'll just take, like yeah. you said, we'll just take one dragon off the board. It just sometimes that doesn't hit, you know what I'm saying? Like th- th- it creates, like for as, an, as, a, as the audience, you know, th- this stuff has to feel believable. And when you set something up and at the very end, you just kind of do this one thing to, like because it's convenient for the moment it's like oh come on you know it just doesn't feel right and yeah i can see your point with that mike absolutely man and yeah. and especially because these these dragons were gone for thousands of, or hundreds of years and you finally get them back and they're unstoppable pretty much and you you kill them off not only did they kill two off they killed them off quick like back to back Right. Which is yeah. so weird. The, the the first one though, that one made a lot of sense. That one hurt. That one freaking mm-hmm. made me tear up. That <laughs> one made sense because it's like, okay, if there's anything that's gonna kill a dragon, obviously the main strongest villain. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy that. One little random boat when you have the aerial view of the battlefield and you don't see that fleet off to your left. No. Yeah. Is dumb and and i i agree with that now my <clears throat> my problem with season eight of you know was the character build-ups of course but it i i read that they gave um the writers pretty much a no budget they gave them no budget they said go put this out we're gonna give you no budget and mm-hmm. we want you to end this se- you know end game of thrones th- the way it's supposed to be ended now, not only did we get what six episodes or five episodes or whatever it was, six. we got we got shit we got a shit script. People hated it, and the the one thing I think it was Benioff that was the, that was the writer's name. Yeah, they Benioff and Weiss. Yep, and they they pretty much said we're gonna end it this way because we have to go to Star Wars because they were right. given a star I'm not sure if it was a contractor but they were promised a Star Wars um project after Game of Thrones and, and that fell through even so it's like exactly. what, it was all for nothing you know exactly and that's what people you know there's like pet- petitions like redo season 8 or have something but obviously if they do redo season 8 it's not going to be as good and i they should leave it the way it is but it just sucks how they ended it it, it it just awful and i now do you guys yeah. think they should redo season eight do you think that's something they should do or just keep it the way it is i well, mean i did I, I did sign the petition you sent me the <laughs> you did? I got. it got it got like I think like three four million signatures yeah. wow which is that's that's very rare to get something in the millions but it's like yeah. no it's like well, what are you gonna no it's like let's just move house of the dragon we have that that is our season eight in retrospect that's our our season 8.5 well it's interesting yeah you know you're absolutely right about that mike you just have to move on that's why when people talk about like you know like retconning the sequel trilogy i'm like now we just got to move on and and just kind of work around it but if they were to redo season eight they should do it pretty soon because when you have all the actors and actresses that are you know that 
still looking the way they looked in that show. It's only been a few years. Um, yeah. Now's the time to really do that because you're going to get to a point like you know if you wait 10, 15 years from now, the the, the cast isn't going to look the same, you know, because they're aging and stuff. Yeah, so. No. They would never do it. It's it's a pride thing. Because if they ever did remake season eight, look how it's such a it's they, they would pride look thing. Bad. It's a, yeah, it's a bad. pride thing for HBO. It yeah. feels like well, we messed up there, guys. Right, is there right. is there something? Is there some a TV show that's ever done something like that? Like just be like, okay, erase this from your mind. We're gonna redo it. Has that ever happened? Mm. I I didn't black. Think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that yeah. I can think of. I've never heard of them do like a do over. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Because um, even <laughs> like, because I've seen some, I've seen some pretty badly reviewed like um, finales. Like I know Sopranos. I wasn't, I never got into the Sopranos. I never watched it. I, I definitely wanted one day, but I heard the finale for that kind of left on a really kind of whack um, uh, cliffhanger, you know. Mm -hmm. And people, fans weren't too happy with that. But even with that, they never redid it, you know. Yeah. So. If you guys, if you guys know of a TV show that has been redone um, and just pretty much taken out. Let us know in the comments. I would love to know and kind of curious. I've never really thought about that until now. But, yeah. but you know, it's interesting. Speaking of HBO, which is a Warner Brothers company, uh, David Zasloff, CEO of Warner Brothers right now, he's he's talked about it. They're going to reboot Harry Potter. And I think they're going to reboot it as a series. So I, if he's willing I to reboot. I heard about that. Yeah. Right. So if he's willing to reboot Potter. Maybe. Uh, you know, maybe. I, I don't know. I can chew I can chew the pill better if it's a movie turned into a series because you can go into more depth with right. a series. Like look at The Last Airbender, the movie with M. Night Shyamalan. The worst movie I've ever seen. And now <laughs> Netflix and now Netflix is making the live action version of The Last Airbender, Last which is like, oh yeah. great. Like I can I can get behind that. Look, but then again, sometimes rings of power. I mean, this is the whole episode that we'll be back Ugh. with Bath Thought Studio. But yeah. it I don't I don't ever want Lord of the Rings to be remade. No. I, I couldn't even get through and I don't know about your your fellow's opinion on that show, but I I I barely got through the first episode. I'm like, yeah, this isn't for me. <laughs> I, I, I got I got maybe episode three. That's as far as I got. And wow, I, I was, wow. I felt I felt bored. Like I'm I, when I watched like Game of Thrones, like I was locked in most of the time. And when I was just, I was bored. There was no, there was not a lot of action. There was too much talking. And yeah, you kind of have to go with that. Like season one of House of the Dragon, there was a lot of talking and a lot of you know time jumping. But it, I script. was still intrigued. Yes, yeah. look I was at still Breaking intrigued. Bad. Breaking Bad is a lot of talking. Yet. Look oh, at how you're engaged. You're engaged every single line. Mm -hmm. and I think that's like, my favorite show of all time. I love that show, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. But that, that just shows you how the script is the most important thing. And with Rings of Power, I finished it, but yeah, that was it's just and a that's, terrible script. And uh, OG, that's shocking because Lord of the Rings is his that's his go to. It's oh, go -to. Wow. So yeah. it was like a dagger through the heart for you, probably, right? Like this is like I uh it wasn't as bad as season eight of Game of Thrones for sure. Wow. Because I don't know. I'm kind of like just looking forward to like, okay, what's coming next? Um, with because this, I know this is not Game of Thrones related, but the Lord of the Rings property, you know how much money can be made there? Oh, yeah. Oh, which is games, TV shows, movies, all that. Don't ever remake Lord of the Rings because you're never going to capture that ever again, no matter what you do. But I agree. You need yeah. you need you need something else with that. I agree. Um, yeah, we can move on. I want to uh, talk about season one of House of the Dragon. Now, when it when it came out, I was skeptic because of how season eight ended, and I'm sure you guys were too. Um, I was really curious on how they were going to go um when i did a little bit of research when season yeah. one came out i knew it was going to be a time jump eventually i knew that you know all these characters are going to be switched around and a lot of new and old uh names were going to be mentioned but all around thought it was great i want to get your guys opinion first before i go but we'll start with you micah i want to how was your take on season one of house of the dragon 10 out of 10. I give it a 10 out of 10. The writers weren't involved. George R. R. Martin, the author, was way more involved. 
Um, and the director of most of the episodes was Miguel Sapau- Sapowski or something, Sapowski. And he was mm-hmm. the one who did Hard Home and and Hard Home was one of the best episodes in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, the script was so much better. I love how I love the actresses. It's yes. like a, especially especially for like you know we're all guys here. Usually we connect with the guys like oh dude Aragorn Anakin hell yeah right. Um, I love Rhaenyra as a little girl and as a when she you know the the older actress and Al- Allison Hightower is amazing. I it's that that is how you write a strong female lead. Yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. It felt very organic you know very natural it wasn't forced you know and and i was worried too because like, i heard about that right that they were going to switch the cast like like a few episodes in because when i when i was watching episode one these kids were fantastic that were mm-hmm. playing allison and and um Rainier, Rainier. Yeah. Rainier. Uh, I, I have the worst time with these names i'm telling you thank god the show had, thank god the show had captions man because <laughs> i was like wait what um no but i mean i you know i, I really these the, the kids who played those girls were fantastic and i'm like oh but they're gonna they're gonna swap these out with with older and older cast and i was really worried about that like how is that gonna affect the show's trajectory because it was it it was like the, i think it was like the first two episodes were like the young girls and uh it didn't affect it at all in fact the the older women i think just, just as good maybe even better than the young women um I love Renary. I, lo- I, lo- I loved the gal who played her. Um, I don't know her name offhand, but she did phenomenal. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And the great thing too about season one is like, like you guys are talking about Game of Thrones as a series, right? From 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 from, from season one to se- season eight, and you were talking about the arcs of the characters and how it all played out, like from beginning to end, right? If you take that into season one of of House of Dragon and, and each maybe replace each season with an episode the there's a great arc there like mm-hmm. it, it like it like from episode one into the last episode it just gradually builds 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 and then by the end of the very last episode you're like no it, it, it it's like you you just you're like oh i gotta see what happens next you're you're on yeah. your edge of your seat like this is crazy i remember watching that going like oh my god now i'm gonna have to wait like a year and a half for season two this is crazy Welcome how am i gonna to the club you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, King King Viserys was my favorite character in that. Oh picture. yeah, I was just he, about to say that he 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 knocked it out of the park. And that I and I really think that was one of the best acting performances throughout any of Game of Thrones and House of Dragon. Yeah. Like it's he, am, it's he, amazing when you have a no name actor because mm-hmm. I'm. It's amazing when you get these no names and you're just like, holy shit, who are you? <laughs> Yeah, and he yeah. was up for a, a lot of awards too. Actually, the yeah. whole House of the Dragon cast was um, up for awards. By the way, I want to shout out whoever picked the cast from oh, yeah. from the kids to the adults. If yeah. you literally, if you were like, okay, this is Allison as a kid, and this is her now as an adult, you wouldn't think twice of like, wait, they don't look really much alike. But dude, yeah. they look so f- similar; it's insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, they picked an amazing cast, and but uh, Damon Damon didn't need anyone. He, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh the casting was amazing because not only did they nail the aesthetics, like you were talking tones, but just the the talent was to mm-hmm. the roof, you know. So you, you just had they just had everything. It was just yeah. incredible. The o- the only kind of so I, I'm the same with you guys. I think it was ten out of ten. They they took a chance. Of doing the time jump, which, like I said, a lot of people were um, skeptic of doing it, but at the same time, they fucking nailed it. They did an amazing job doing it, and it was, it it was almost, um, it was almost like you kind of went in with that mindset. It's gonna, it's gonna suck because of that yeah. time jump, but it just blew it out of the water. Um, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to bring up something. I almost forgot what it was. Damon. So when when Damon, did you guys have an issue with his his kind of character arc? How he went from, you know, being this badass to this like, or he went from being like a um, he was rude. He didn't give a shit about nothing. He he wanted everything for himself, and then he became this softy, and then became you know this badass where he just wants to fight everyone now. Like, how do you think his character arc went within that show? Take it away. 
Oh, yeah. I, I, it didn't for me. I, I didn't really mind that at all, to be yeah. honest. So I was fine with that. I thought, I thought the way they handled all these characters, like the writing and all that, were, was great. And it didn't bother me. It felt like I said before with the with the other characters, it felt organic. I mean, I know there was, uh, you know, some some pretty, I don't want to say drastic changes, but I mean, it, it, it there were some changes there for sure. But it, it didn't feel like jarring to me, in my okay. opinion. I was okay with it. What, what about you, Micah? No, I, I really, I, I really liked it because I mean, just like how you said, there was an arc just to Damon, and that when Viserys had his brother on his back, and you think, okay, these guys are never going to like each other, they're never right. going to respect each other, they keep fighting, they keep getting in these arguments, one is going to kill the other, and then when Damon picked up his brother's crown, crown as he's walking in, dude, that was it's dope. crazy. It's Pretty crazy joked. how little scenes like that can make you so emotional because again the detail and the world building and the immersion are not broken the moment you break immersion for me you've kind of lost me like right. and and by the way that scene when he picked up the crown it wasn't scripted it, it was it oh was yeah all it was all um improv because wow. when he was climbing up the stairs, his crown fell off, and he he played it off. And you see Damon grab the crown, and then I guess they they're like they finished it off, and then they're like, "Nope, we're keeping it. Like we're keeping that. Yeah. I want that in the script." So that was amazing. Sometimes things like that, those like off script things, work out. Like not to bring up Star Wars again, but that happened with the Han Solo "I love you, I know" scene. George Lucas in the script, it was "I love you" and "I love you too." literally that's what it was and then it was it was harrison ford who kind of ad-libbed it he like you know he just kind of added in the i know thing i guess as a joke or something and then and they went with it and it paid off from it became one of the most iconic lines in cinema history so i yeah. mean sometimes that stuff pays off and you, it's, i mean they made, they made the right call keeping it it was absolutely <clears throat> it was so cool man yeah or or aragorn breaking his toe and kick the helmet pain that was, it. that was not that you know believe it or not breaking your toe is not in the script <laughs> that's crazy I, I do want to bring up one more character for um allison or i want to bring up one more character for house of the dragon and it is allison now she was the one thing that pissed me off and it was this is literally the only thing that pissed me off was <laughs> allison's almost like revenge mindset towards rhaenyra yeah it, it just didn't make sense to me it, there wasn't something that rhaenyra did that was validated for her you know her response is to be that pissed off it's, it's all opinion. jealousy it's all jealousy. yeah it's like she can get away with she can get away with everything and yet when i try to do everything right i still struggle yet when she does everything wrong she excels so exactly. i i i i agree with that but what rhaenyra did wasn't like she didn't do anything that was so drastic to where she, you know she could do whatever she wanted like if well, you can sleeping with the king's guard that oh besides that trouble, besides having, that having three kids that aren't even the right from the right legit but she was but father. she was pissed off with him but with her even before the three kids like before they switched over to the adults they already had that that um that she had that hatred towards Rhaenyra remember when she walked in with her green dress when she the, oh yeah, the, yeah yeah and 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 she found out that she had slept with um Kristen Cole yeah like well, that her dad, was already her, there her dad is the devil on her shoulder and if her dad wasn't you know being Otto Hightower wasn't speaking to her like that she would never have had that before. okay that that yeah. makes a lot of sense then think if you put it like that I can understand why she's mad because that was yeah. one thing that I was struggling with like yeah I get it she did whatever she wanted but she she was she's like an only child she you know she didn't do much to where she was getting in trouble but at the same time Otto hightower was that fucking devil on her shoulder right. telling her what rainier did and it's bad for the family like okay i get that yeah. you put Otto on her shoulder plus misinterpreting Aegon's dream mm -hmm. all because of a freaking it's like all just because a lot a word was said at the wrong time and someone took it to mean something else yeah. Plus everything that happened before, that's how this. It's that's how basically the whole show is because the series told the dream to someone that should not have heard it, <laughs> and she thought it was she thought or he thought it was Rhaenyra and not Alicent. Yeah, next yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. Now, and um, 
Now, the ending of season one, um, I believe it was Jace is the one who got eaten up by Vagar, right? Just Yeah. Um, by the way, an amazing yeah. episode. I, I I loved I loved every part of that episode. Like it was such a great ending to a season one. Uh, what do you guys What are you guys looking forward to for season two? Just the kind of ramping up of like, because how it ended, right, with the death. Uh, just the ramping up of like, what's going to happen next? Like how how that's going to pan out? What what's the next? What what's, what what are the next moves going forward? Um, I think it's going to be fascinating. I, I I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And uh, see, uh, episode one is going to be called "A Son for a Son." Just, just throwing that out. So, there. so that is into the revenge yeah. thing, which I think is super interesting, man. Just Harris, I love this. Just Harris and Amon, because mm -hmm. even Amon, when when Vagar ate him, he was like, "Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that." And, and uh, real quick, before you before you continue, um, I was told in the books that he was Amon was pretty much did that on purpose he killed him on purpose but in the show it made it look like he did it on accident so i'm kind of I, I i'm not sure which direction they're going to go with that but i uh, i think on accident actually adds to the like yeah. it, it even adds to the stakes a little bit because it's yeah. like oh shit, i didn't mean to do that fuck what do we do now you know that kind of thing yeah. i think it makes it even better yeah now now what are you looking I, forward to season two micah i'm looking forward to all the dragons that still haven't come to light like Verm vermithor vermithor, vermithor, yeah. vermithor like they damon just randomly walks into the dragon pit on dragonstone and just starts singing in high valerian and you're like whoa what is going on <laughs> and then you know that you know you saw that one beginning where he's in the volcano incubating a bunch of eggs so it's yeah. like they have the numbers with terms of dragons and i want to know like what who who is there because i haven't read the books i don't know anyone's name i don't yeah let like me that. by the way let me specify this to the to the audience us three have we are just show watchers right not, we have not read the books unfortunately um i did read a, i did read a little bit in um into um Aegon the conqueror which was an amazing you know first couple chapters but i had to stop because i kind of wanted to run my experience on game of thrones and house of the dragon on strictly what i see on tv and film yeah. but i eventually want to once you know they eventually come out with shows that i want to read the books eventually but yeah i'm i'm kind of the same way i kind of want to see what in season two where the characters go from here uh Rhaenyra is going to be um just i don't know if she's going to be in that mindset where she just you know reds in her eyes and she just wants to kill everyone kind of like what um denarius did um kind of curious on where they're going to go with that um i want to see what damon and Eamon. i want to see that them go fucking to battle dude I mean, <laughs> i'm not sure if it's going to be in the you know there's only going to be eight episodes in season two i'm not sure if that's going to happen but that is the most Thing, that, like, that's the best thing I'm trying. To, I'm looking forward to is them to just yeah. go and add it, and you know, dragon fighting. I want to see happen. You know, Vermithor is the second biggest <clears throat> dragon in the in the um in the House of Dragon, House of the Dragon, and you know, Vagar is the, uh, the biggest. But I want to see them go at it, and I'm kind of curious on what they're going to do with Sea Smoke. Now, um, what's his name? Uh, uh Lacer What's his name? Um, <laughs> The House of Valerian has yeah, this. yeah, but he doesn't have Lenor, Lenor, yeah, Lenor Valerian, yeah. I'm kind of curious what what they're gonna do with uh Sea Smoke because he's no longer the writer. Um, Lenor is no longer the writer of Sea Smoke, so I'm kind of curious on what they're gonna do with him. But yeah, the dragon fighting is something I'm I'm looking forward to as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna be so epic. Um, anyway, that's 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 the thing that could have been a little bit better with season eight, episode three, because it's like Daenerys, Jon Snow. I know Jon Snow is going to be inexperienced, so you can't expect much of that. But Daenerys versus the Night King, that could have been. There's that. There was that one shot where they come through the clouds, and the coolest. Oh, yes. The second, yes. the second cool. No, yeah, I would say the first coolest shot. The second coolest shot was when the wings come up behind Daenerys. Yeah, yeah. And, and dude. Put, I Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But but the first, the coolest shot probably ever in Game of Thrones was when the Night King put in that like ethereal fog into the battle, and then the dragons are blowing fire through the fog, and you just mm -hmm. see all the light, the light shadowing like behind it. That was that that was cool, but 
like that was that was our first aerial dog fight and it's like yeah let, let's go into it let, let's pump the brakes and it'll fly right by and that's the thing that sucked about that is you know she was the only one who owned dragons but at the same time that the one time they had the the opportunity to use dragon versus dragon it, it just wasn't yeah. it wasn't there so i agree and that, that. Could, the, and that battle that fight could have been a much better ending for daenerys I mean, look if, if if you're gonna kill daenerys in season eight imagine if she went out saving Jon snow mm -hmm. that would have been, been like way better like, i agree i don't know I, that's just like have her give her a heroic death if she's gonna die anyway now, now do you fellows think for house of dragon season two this is a kind of a, like a little bit of an inside baseball question but i'm kind of curious what you guys think like do you think that because we're dealing with we were dealing with a lot of like hollywood strikes mm -hmm. you know at the time of 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 the, of season two being um produced or whatever do you think that we're going to see hopefully not but do you think we'll see a dip in quality because of that drama going on while they were trying to do season two or do you think we'll be good so they weren't affected by it because of where they were filming they were filming in um i think it was like scotland or Ireland, something like England. that yeah oh that's interesting so yeah. they didn't have, it didn't they didn't have to abide by the whole like um, no because and also um the strike that was happening was a i think it was only affected by u.s um actors because okay. um i guess sag after and i'm not sure if it's the same um um union that they use in in like england or whatever but for what i read was the um, union that they were using was the uk union which their version of the um strike didn't happen so they weren't directly affected by it they lucked out that's crazy okay yeah. cool i didn't know that interesting and they just so they just started they just stopped filming everything's ready to go they're just doing the um special effects um all the you know cgi stuff they're throwing they're putting everything together they should be coming out with a i think a trailer like a like a 90 second trailer or like a minute trailer of house of the Dra or house of the dragon season two but they won't come out with like official trailer until like 90 days before the first episode drops which nice. is speculated to be i believe i wrote it down um spring of 2024 so coming up actually it's Dang. not too far from now yeah I mean, like that's like spring would be like march april march that's not april too yeah bad. nice so so we should be getting something um within the next couple of days of like i think they said like a 30 second or 60 second kind of just like a put together trailer but not teaser. i don't think it's gonna be, yeah there you go teaser thank you sir um okay so there was news that dropped uh, a couple of days ago um about spinoffs now okay. um the one that we all i guess i shouldn't say all because i'll speak for myself the one i was really um looking forward to was the john snow uh spinoff series um kit harrington is actually in talks with hbo um nothing has been set in stone yet they're still you know working out the details but there is word that there's something gonna happen and we just don't know when but what would you guys think of a John uh, John Snow spinoff? Um, I'd be fine with it. I loved his character. Um, they did a they did a good job with House of Dragon, right? So they've shown that they've proven that they can they can kind of they can kind of play in this world and do it right, at least so far with House of Dragon. So why not? I'm I'm cool with it. Absolutely. As long as I mean, as long as it's done though, as as like as long as it's, it's the same quality that we expect from like you know this, this this franchise, you know, like the first seven seasons of Game of Thrones and and the first season of, of uh, House of Dragon, I think I think it's uh, a great idea. But the, the, it's a risky move though because you're taking a very popular character, and if it doesn't land, you know, then then you have issues. Then you start to damage the brand a little bit, like what's going on with like the MCU and things like that yeah so they gotta they gotta stick the landing for sure but i mean if they can just kind of if they can duplicate the success that they had with hot d then i think it will be will be good what about you micah yeah um i'm kind of i actually i wouldn't want one um because he isn't Jon snow he is aegon targaryen yeah, yeah, yeah. and his brother is the king so what this guy is 
the rightful heir to everything. And it's like, he, what do you do with him? He's north of the wall. The Night King, the Night White Walkers are gone. The only thing you could do with him is go east, go help out his brother and help with local wars and regional wars there. But other than that, it's like, I don't, I love him, but what is he going to do now? You already, you already ruined the foundation by yep. not making him the ruler. So it's like, it's a good point. I don't really, I don't really, I don't, I'm not invested anymore. And, and, point. and if they do, like they, they do take that risk. If they do do a um, Jon Snow spinoff, they take that risk because there's no script written for it. It, it's it's there's no book written out uh, george R. R. martin didn't write a book about it there's no story beyond you know season six um so there's no there's no character arc of how it would go um so it, it is risky if they do it in that aspect um but yeah you're right micah there there's nothing there's not really a you know a protagonist in, in the john snow besides maybe him trying to take over his rightful you know his rightful um Iron throne, throne, but but he would never go against Bran. So it's like, exactly what and it, I don't. The, there's nothing you can could, do. It could be Bran. Bran could be his protagonist because he is he's no longer, you know, Bran Stark. He's the Three Eyed Raven. So I, they could go in that, but it, but you're it, it's it's too risky to do that because Bran was never the the um he was never he never had that protagonist you know act in it well, you know what i'm saying well brent brent can never be lord of anything yeah oh but oh but he can with the seven kingdoms <laughs> yeah, yeah with the seven yeah. kingdoms yeah. It, it's and and um there was I, I put a video out on my tiktok and um if you guys remember the ending of season eight uh when brent had his first meeting with his um with his people um he asked where um what's his name um uh, what's the dragon's name? Daenerys the dragon? Drogon. Yeah, Drogon. He asked if anyone knew where Drogon was. And before uh, Sam could finish, Sam said he was last seen um, headed east. Headed towards, east. Towards Valeria. Val yeah. Well, yeah. we don't know if it was Valantis or Valeria. So Valantis was where the uh, the red, um, red... I don't know if they're red witches or red... Um, <sighs> Yeah, what they're the, called the, the yeah the, the red priests and priests yes yeah so they were there was word that he was gonna drogon was gonna fly there with daenerys oh, and revived an and revived an that i would watch the john snow spin off of that <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. so that would be something kind of how john snow was uh, uh um brought back to life through the uh the, the red witch uh, uh what's her name that'd be um, cool I forgot her Melisandre. name. Um, Melisandre. There you go. That yeah, would be that, cool. they, that that was one thing I read. Um, now, will they do it? We don't know. That that's a lot of people. Then, then, if Daenerys came back like that, I would fully get behind a psychotic Daenerys. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I agree. I think that would be that would be, be awesome. wild. Be wild. Um, another spinoff that has officially been um, um released was uh, a knight of the seven kingdoms a hedge knight starts shooting in 2024 so um i don't know if you guys have heard of the hedge knight and who um, sir duncan was an egg um i kind of read a little bit about it so Eamon talked about it yeah maester Eamon. yeah so for those who don't know egg was a is aegon targaryen i believe is aegon targaryen um mm -hmm. it, and then the knight that pretty much trained him was um, um, Sir Duncan. Um, I didn't really, really read in too, mu too much into it, but apparently their storyline was really intriguing and a lot of action happened. And so kind of curious on uh, how that's going to come out. But what do you guys yeah. think about that? That's interesting. I never, even, I didn't even, I haven't heard of that, of that spinoff. Um, it sounds interesting. It sounds like it could be uh, something that they can kind of play with and be fun. You know, um, we'll see how it plays out though. And that one's what you said for 2024. You said, yeah, it's, it, they're going to be shooting in 2024. Oh, okay, so probably mm -hmm. we won't see it probably till 2025. Okay, yeah, probably 2026, probably 2026. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that makes sense because you'll have the um, 
you'll have how you'll have house of dragon spring of 2024 and then john snow is that the one that's going to come after that no no we the, the, they haven't released anything of it's it's on it's been shelved for now okay. that idea of the spin-off of uh the john snow series has been shelved they're still in talks john snow's the one who's pretty much promoting or not promoting he's pretty much um the one trying to get it done but hbo is kind of you know has their own yeah i wonder why they butchered his character (laughs) exactly (laughs) but uh have you have you heard anything about the hedge knight and uh about sir sir duncan and egg no no that i think once you start going down that path i feel like you're just milking it too much yeah you think so because it's like i mean i i hope i'm wrong i because then again like i really do hope i'm wrong like I thought Joaquin Phoenix's Joker was like, what? But (laughs) it was on par with Heath Ledger. So I could, I hope I'm wrong. But Um, the one, the one show I really want to happen and all the John, Jon Snow and the Knights, the, what's it called? A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. I think if they ever do it, they need to do it kind of quick here is Aegon's Conquest. If they do, you, yeah. do you guys know anything about the conquest, Aegon's conquest? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, it with the sister wives and you know the fall of the doom of Valyria and all yeah. that. That would, yeah, I I feel like a, a a less riskier thing to do would be Robert's Rebellion. Yeah, I agree with that, and th- I think the um, Ned Stark and and Robert Baratheon. I think that yeah, would be as boys. Yes, I think that would be amazing too. But those those are the two. Uh, now that you say that, I think those two would be something that they need to get done, like within yeah. the next like ten years. Because those two would, if they do it right, will be even better than Game of Thrones, better than House of the Dragon, and yeah. because of those are two main stories that people want to know about. Because it was talked about House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon, they talked about it nonstop about how Rhaegar yeah, and, and yeah. yep, they, they talked about Dance it nonstop. The, the Mad King, like it was just one thing they mentioned throughout all eight seasons. And yeah. so I, I would love to see that in Aegon's, Aegon's, Aegon's Conquest. I think that would, we, we kind of need to see where it all started, in my opinion. And yeah. I think that'd be, that'd Agreed. be amazing. Agreed. Um, what else we were gonna get into? Um, oh, so last topic, guys. This is where I want to go. Uh, we're gonna go back to season two. Um, I had made a video on TikTok, and I this video is almost at four million views. You know, people hating on me, people agreeing with me, and it, it was a it was a video I put out of Aegon, possibly, or I'm sorry, Aemon possibly being the father of helena's children okay. now if you guys remember in season two um a a- Amon was always protective of his sister like right. he would he would you know always make eye contact with her and all this stuff and when if you remember before they f- they went to go look for Aegon when he was missing and um when he was going to be when viserys died he he was raping someone yes when yeah. when when he died, uh, Viserys died. They needed Aegon to be there, and Aegon wasn't there, so they were gonna go look for him. And the first person that popped in when Alicent went to go see Helena was, um, he said, uh, "Where's your where's where's your father?" Alicent said, "Where's your father?" To the kids, and he, um, the kids pretty much said, "Aemon's name." So it kind of gave this like leeway of can can a- Aemon be the father the father of this children and if you remember when um damon's wife died um they were at the funeral and amon was like if if it was my duty to be her you know her husband i would do it you guys remember that part you know it's it's interesting that you mentioned it's it's interesting that you mentioned this because it's like amon he didn't he like um what's the word for it like continually kind of taunt the the series and the i'm so bad with these names the series and the just series for like uh um, mm-hmm. being bastards yeah so i think yeah. the irony i think it'd be like the irony of his own kids with elena being bastards would be kind of an interesting kind of development yeah, that's a good point yeah i don't yeah 
that, would that, be, that, that, that would be cool. Now, do you do you think that would kill his character arc if th that were to happen? Obviously, the, all these books have been um, uh, these stories have been written through the books. Now, are they going to go one hundred percent what the book says? You know, there's a couple things they did in season one that didn't go strictly by the book. Like when when Rainice came out the from from the floor, that wasn't in the books. So that's why people were pissed off at the showrunner because she put that in the books. They wanted her fired because. It, they didn't stick to the script now obviously if this doesn't happen it doesn't happen but it was kind of that thing where it's like there's a possibility because of all the hints that they've thrown out that Eamon would be you know perfect for helena which was kind of weird why they would put that in there if they weren't going to do something with it but in my opinion that's it, it just kind of leaning towards that yeah yeah interesting uh, yeah that's a that's a good again We'll see. You know what? The teaser will tell. We'll, we'll reveal all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that teaser is going to break the internet too because everyone loves a House of Dragon. That's going to be crazy when that drops. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll end with this. Um, for season two, wh who do you think is going to be the most important character out of everyone? I'll start with you, OG. Um, I think it's going to be my girl, Renee. Renee? Yeah, I think it's going to be her. Yeah. How about you, Micah? Lane or no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be uh, Damon. Damon, and I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it ain't going to be a happy ending. So yeah. there's going to yeah. be some shit that happens between Damon uh, or Rhaenyra or someone like that. I think I, I'm going to go with the uh, wild one. I'm going to go with Helena. I think oh. Helena's gonna. She's gonna be. Oh. She's gonna be someone that people aren't gonna think that is gonna be an important character. But I think she's gonna play a big role in how this war ends. In my opinion, like I said, I haven't you, read you the just, book. You just, got, you just got some more haters, apparently. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably, but yeah, I think Helena is going to surprise a lot of people. Um, if they, if I'm reading this correctly, like how the show's going, I think Helena's gonna play a big part. Nice. So if it if it does come back and watch this, you know I said it first, right? There we go. We gotta we gotta clip it. If it happens, yeah, we gotta exactly. clip it. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you guys coming on. We'll we'll get you guys in here for some uh some Marvel talk and some Lord cool. of the Rings talk that we're gonna be putting out here soon. So um appreciate you guys coming on. Um Michael, Thank if you, you can remind the people where they where they can find you at. Instagram, Michael at Michael Wyalana, and I don't have a YouTube channel yet. Yet, yeah, we're, we're gonna get that. We're gonna get that going. OG, always a pleasure doing videos with you, brother. Uh, like, well, you remind the people where they can find you at as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, for inviting me, Atones. It's always it's always fun talking shop with you. And Mike, it was great. It was great meeting you and uh, likewise. Talking stuff. Thank you. You know, very fun. And uh, yeah, it's been an honor serving with you all. So everyone, uh, <laughs> thank you. And uh, yeah, you can find me on YouTube, Orange Grove Fifty Five, where we talk a lot of theme parks. We talk. Um, nerd stuff like mcu star wars all that good stuff and uh, you can also find me on instagram orange grove 55 and on twitter at orange grove 55 appreciate it and yeah you guys you can find me at tones underscore tv on all platforms um don't forget to hit subscribe uh, we're going to be putting clips out on tiktok and instagram um and also go follow our podcast where me and uh the candy camper we just talk about literally anything like we yeah. talked about we talk about sriracha uh, oh yeah. You, used in a way that shouldn't be used uh we talk about you know um it's chicken wing boneless chicken wings even a chicken wing we talk about random stuff so if you guys are interested i'll put the podcast in the description below but appreciate you guys thank you good night